struggling pioneers were frequently at the mercy of outlaw gangs. They held the frontiers in a grip of terror, and the few men who courageously represented the law seemed faced with a hopeless task. Then a mysterious rider known as the Durango Kid became a champion of law and order. He inspired new courage in the settlers and sent terror into the ranks of the renegade. Many of them gathered in Ponca City. Durango Kid followed. accomplished there, he again disappeared. Hi, gentlemen. I'm a stranger here in town. I'd like to... Pardon me, mister. Why can a man get a bite to eat in this town? Up the street a ways, the Smiley's place. And you'd better stay on the north side. North side? What? Line for. You'll find out soon enough. I can. You can't. I can. You can't. I can. You can't. I can do it. I can. You can't. Smiley, just what is the trouble between you and Billy? I can tell you in two words. He said to me the other day, I got to have more dough. So I made him a proposition that really laid him low. If he can do more things than me and do them all at once, I have to pay him twice as much And he thinks I'm a dunce If he can do it, I can do it If I can do it, if he can do it If I can play it, he can play it He can play it, if I can play it He couldn't do it. Hey! Huh? Show us some service, Burnett, or I'm gonna wreck this joint. What you want, Fargo? A couple of cups of java. And they better be hot. You heard him. Well, how about some nice Red River catfish with some fried taters? Oh, huh? I've eaten so much catfish, I begin to smell like one. Soap and water to help that. What do you want, mister? I'll take the biggest steak you've got in the house. I'll bet you don't. We don't serve steak on the south side of the deadline. Deadline? Right there in front of you. Well, what's it mean? What's wrong with this town, anyway? Ain't nothing wrong with this town. It's just some of the people in it. Well, look, if you don't serve steaks on this side of the line, do you serve them on the other? Sure do. Why don't you serve them on this side, then? 
Oh, that's a long story. Go ahead and make it short. Well, I buy my meat from a butcher on the north side, and he won't let me sell it on the south side. And when I ain't got no meat, then I got to catch Red River catfish on the north... No, I got to catch the Red River catfish on the south side. Then the people on the north side won't eat them because I caught them on the south side. And hold it, hold it. Start from the beginning. Well, it ain't the beginning that's worrying me. It's the finish. And I'm the one that's going to be finished because I'm right in the middle of all of this. Right in the middle of what? The devil in the deep blue sea. This ain't no time for jokes, Molly. What he means, mister, is that there's a feud on in Red Mount. Come on, boys. Let's go. A feud? Between the businessmen on the north side and Ten Sleep and Fargo and all of his gun rowdies on the other side. Now that you know what the deadline's about, which side you're thrown in with? Well, which side do you think I belong on? Well, you use your own judgment. But if you want to stay healthy, you'll stay on this side. Thanks for the tip, Fargo. But I came to Red Mound for peace and quiet. You came to the wrong place. Mister, if you move over on the north side now, I'll serve you this on the house. Smiley, for a steak like that, I'd throw in with anybody. How would you like it? Rare with onions. Rare with onions is the way you get it. What's your name? Larkin, Steve Larkin. Steve Larkin. Yeah, I'm going to buy the old Atkins ranch. Huh? I'm buying a lot of trouble, mister. There ain't no need to waste good meat like this on you. Why not? You're on your way to Boot Hill. tired of having to dodge bullets. Keep back from the doorway. Here comes Tug Carter. He's the deputy city marshal. What's all the trouble about? Well, I don't know. Here comes Jed. Maybe he'll know something about it. We caught those two red-handed trying to steal some of our cattle. It's up to you to arrest them, Carter. They're on their own side of the deadline now, Jed. They gunned me the minute I stepped over there. When I had you appointed, you swore to uphold the law here, Carter. It's getting so a man ain't safe even in his own store. And up to now, you haven't done a thing about it. What can I do, Mr. Carmody? Those renegades have tried everything they can think of to lure me over there for killing. Look at them now, standing there like a bunch of buzzers just waiting for me. I don't care how many renegades there are across the line. It's your job to arrest those two men. What about it? I reckon you're right, Mr. Carmody. That's the last of Tug Carter. They'll riddle him. He's too nervy to live long. Wait till he gets closer. Let him have it. What's the idea? You'll find out. Turn around. Go out the back way. Take him across the deadline. I'll cover you. You heard him. Move. Let him get out of here. Nice work, Tug. I sure thought you was a goner. So did I. I would have been, too, if the stranger hadn't pulled me out of the fire. You faced that fire, Marshal. I just helped a little. Well, thanks anyway. See you later. All right, move, you two. I don't know how you did it, 
But it was a nice job. We need a man like you as city marshal. Tug can stay on as deputy. What do you say? Sorry, I'm not interested. It pays well. The answer's still no. Well, have it your own way. Molly, how do I get out to the Atkins Ranch? Well, the first thing you better do is get on your horse and then just follow his ears five miles north. <laughs> That's easy. Never sneak up on a man like that. I might have killed you. Who are you and what are you doing in here? I'm Steve Larkin. I'm interested in buying this old place. Oh, you're the man who wrote me from Parker City. That's right. Now I gather you're Terry Saunders, the real estate broker. Uh, yes, Mr. Larkin. And I think it's only fair to warn you that if you expect to buy this place, you can expect almost anything to happen. Just what do you mean by that? Well, I've been trying to sell this ranch for two years. But every buyer I've had has been scared away. From what? Oh, I don't know. But mysterious things have been going on, and strange men have been seen in the vicinity. I mistook you for one. That's lucky for me. I shot first, or you'd lost another buyer. You mean you still want to go through with the deal? Would $500 be all right as a down payment? Oh, it certainly would. All right. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> You're not a very good businessman, Mr. Larkin. What's that? I would have closed for a lot less, and you could have saved yourself some money. A deal's a deal, Miss Saunders. I think you'd better hurry to town and have that sale recorded. Oh, I won't waste any time. My horse is out back. I'll help you. Oh, look! Larkin bought the ranch and paid the girl. She's heading for town now to record the deal. That's what she thinks.
she is now. The Durango Kid. Bill, you and Duke lead him off while me and Tensley grab the money from the girl. you're talking about. I'm asking you, where are they and what are they up to? Well, uh, they needed an extra cash and figured that lady real estate agent might have some. If you boys know it's healthy, you'll stay put. in time, Mr. Uh... My friends call me Durango. Oh, you're the Durango kid. That's right. I thought for a moment I'd jump from the frying pan into the fire. Not this time, miss. But I suggest you better hurry into town. Thanks, Durango. Customers don't like to have me sell them goods to you boys from across the deadline. Man's got to buy smokes, doesn't he? Yeah. Give me three cigars. Howdy, Miss Saunders. Hello, Mr. Carmody. At last I found a man who can't be scared out of buying the Atkins Ranch. Who bought it? A man named Steve Larkin. I want you to draw up the papers and record the sale at once. I don't want to butt in on your business, Miss Saunders, but aren't you afraid of getting mixed up with whoever's been trying to keep the place unoccupied? What do you mean? Well, knowing how many of your prospects they've scared off in the past two years, they might not take kindly to you for selling the place. You think they might take revenge on me? I wouldn't put it past them. So that's why two men tried to rob me coming here. Rob you? Yes. Mr. Larkin gave me a substantial deposit on the ranch. They'd have taken it if the Durango kid hadn't routed them. Durango, the Durango kid. kid. What's the matter, Mr. Dugan? Does the mention of the Durango kid's name always startle you that way? No. What's he doing in Red Mound? Maybe you ought to ask him. 
We better get the sale recorded without any further delay, Mr. Carmody. She's making a mistake, Grat. That bunch might jump the two of you if you try to put that deal through. Maybe you're right. I'd hate to have them after me. You take my advice and... You take mine, Dugan. Durango. Just why are you so interested in talking down that ranch sale? It's none of your business. I'm making it my business. What do you know about it? I don't know anything. If I did, I wouldn't stick my neck out telling you about it. We'll go into that later. You, record that sale and make it fast. Right away. Come with me, Miss Saunders. You stay here. Here we are, page 92, the Atkins property. Someone's waving at us from the store window. That's Flip Duke. Something must be up. We'll split up and cover both doors. He just tried to hold up Grant's store. I think you're lying, Dugan. But we'll soon find out from Carmody. Get into the store. Todd, what's all this? These Jaspers say the Durango kid tried to rob the store. Is that right, Carmody? Of course he didn't, Tug. He was here to see that I had Steve Larkin's ranch sale recorded safely. I thought so. Anybody tries to pull a robbery like that, it'd be you and your crowd, Dugan. All right. Let's see how fast you can get back to your own side of that line. All right, move. All the excitement, boys. The Durango kid's in town. And if he shows up again, we're gonna blow that mask off. And I came to Red Mound for peace and quiet. The only place you'll get that, Larkin, is in Boot Hill. What's the trouble with you, Smiley? Look like you lost your best girl. It's worse than that. Did anything be worse? Now, where's that steak you held out on me a while back? That galoot right there made me cook that steak for him, and now the butcher's mad at me and won't sell me any more meat. I might just well close up this place. Well, you still got catfish, haven't you? That's all I have got is catfish. Catfish? Uh, come on, boys. Let's get out of here. That's good riddance to bad rubbish. 
Well, fry me up a nice mess of catfish, will you, Smiley? You wouldn't like it. Why not? Well, I'll have to let you in on a little secret. Them renegades come in here this morning and ate up all the catfish, except it wasn't catfish. I rung in some mud suckers on them. <laughs> but if you'd really like to have a catfish, I'll do my best to catch you one. My, but the sun is bright. It's a nice and warm today. Not a ripple in the little brook. I can't get this fish to bite. He's a looking the other way. He's either not so crazy or just too lazy to look. Oh, come a little closer and you'll see as you shall see. Catfish, take a look at this worm. Oh, try a little nibble and you'll be a pair with me. Catfish, take a look at that worm. Who do you think you are? You're not a trout or fancy bass. This worm knows you're a lowbrow when you're swimming slowly past. Just a little easy taste and see, yes, you shall see. Catfish, take a look at that worm. Sneak right up and grab it, then just keep it if you can. Catfish, what's the matter with that worm? Oh, amble up and stab it and I'll show you to the pan. Catfish, please, take a look at that worm. Why do you stay so far away? Just watch that morsel squirm. I'm a serving you the best in bait, the caviar of worm. Make your meal of meat and you will be and also swim. Catfish, take a look at that worm. You're not a rainbow. Catfish, take a look at that worm. You're not a bluegill. Catfish, take a look at that worm. It's getting late now. Catfish, get a load of that worm. Why, Steve, I didn't expect to find you here. Neither did I, Terry. Tell me, Tug, what do you think about these goings on at the ranch? It's a mystery to me, Steve. Somebody just doesn't hanker to have it occupied for some reason. Well, now that you're the owner, maybe you'll be able to find out what it's all about. Here are all the papers. Oh, thank you. Start shooting. Mr. Camote, what is the meaning of this? Somebody took a shot at me. I thought I saw him duck in here. Well, you must be seeing things, because I've been sorting these boxes for the last ten minutes, and I ain't seen anybody. Sorry. Maybe I'm a little jumpy. <laughs> strap has been cut. We'd better get inside before somebody else takes another shot at us. Whoever it was, Steve, must have done it to keep you from following him. Yeah. The same things happened to the other buyers, Steve. Bushwhacking some mysterious warnings. I've tried everything to find out what's behind all this, but they're tipped off to every move I make. Got any ideas? Plenty. I'm going to search every inch of that ranch for signs. 
But I'll need help. Well, count me in on anything you want to try, Steve. Thanks. I'll need the cook, Smiley. You mentioned about closing your place. You haven't got any meat, and I know you can't catch catfish. Want the job? No, I, I don't believe I do. That ranch has got a reputation. I don't want no part of it. How about you, Tex? You and the boys? No, not us. We ain't going out there. I thought there were men in this town, real men. You're just a bunch of loafers who'd rather sing songs for nickels and dimes instead of doing a man's job. And all you're good for is washing dishes, Smiley Burnett. If you were half the man Steve is, you'd help him clear up this mystery and rid the town once and for all of scallywags like Flip Dugan and his gunmen. Well, I'm not too handy with a gun, but if you want me to string along, I, I will. Good for you, Smiley. I always thought you had a spark of gumption in you. Sure is burning mighty low right now. You can count us in, too, Steve. All right, Tex. You and the boys get your gear together and meet me at the ranch. All right. Thanks, Terry. You sure know how to handle men. Yeah, I'll say she does, by the way she's got you hogtied. <laughs> oh, Tug, don't be that way. Nobody will like you. <laughs> <laughs> Big ranch, Steve. It sure is. I never know the saddle could get so hard. Well, cheer up, Smiley. It's only 15 miles back to the ranch. Oh. Three shots. Sounds like somebody's in trouble. He ain't having no more trouble than I'm having. Three more. It's a signal, all right. Might be we've been spotted. No shots were fired to warn somebody that we're coming. I believe you're right. It's like I told you, they know our movements before we make them. We must be getting close to something. Or that ghost gang wouldn't be sending out signals like that to cover it up. What do you think we ought to do about it? We'll scatter out and see if we can find those shots. Meet me at the ranch later. Like the boys have been working for a change instead of playing. You hope. When my sweet little lil yodel's over the hill, I can't get on my shoes fast enough. Fast enough. When she kisses my cheek, I can't eat for a week. She's my sweet little hillbilly lil. Hillbilly lil. Hillbilly lil. My sweet little hillbilly lil I get all out of breath Cause I love her to death She's my sweet, sweet little hillbilly lil Oh, she says that I sing Like a thrush in the spring and it sure gives me a thrill. Hey, a thrill. Now my heart kind of pitch when she says, let's get hit. She's my sweet little hillbilly lil. Hillbilly lil. Hillbilly lil. She's my sweet little hillbilly lil. I get all out of breath because I love her to death. She's my sweet little hillbilly lil. Hiya, boys. Find anything out there, Smiley? No, I combed them hills all the way over, and there wasn't nothing, even a jackrabbit. All I saw was a rattlesnake, and it didn't even stop to look at me. How'd you make out, Steve? All right, I think. 
Found this piece of broken rock. Also, these three empty cartridges from a 38. And I found them right in the spot where one of those Jaspers fired his signal shots. Well, we all shoot 45s around here. I know it, Tug. Now, all we got to do is find somebody that shoots 38. Don't you think that row could have been lost 10 years ago as well as today? No, Smiley. In that case, it would have been tarnished long ago. The Jasper who fired those shots broke his spur. And I know where I can find the rest of it. Well, if you can, we can arrest him on suspicion. Make him talk. Maybe so, Tug. But first, we're going to smoke that gang into the open and find out the tip-off man at the same time. How are you going to do it? Well, this way, i got to take it. We'll throw out a little bait. Hope you've come in to say you changed your mind about pinning on the marshal's badge. <laughs> Not yet. Afraid I'm going to be pretty busy putting that ranch of mine on a paying basis. Well, I hope your luck holds out. So do I. Mind filling this list of supplies for me? Why, no. I'll have that ready for you in half an hour. Nothing much. I got a 38 target pistol and thought we'd do a little practicing tomorrow. See, I'm throwing a party at my ranch. A party? Yes, and I'd like to have you come along with all my neighbors. Matter of fact, I'd appreciate it if you'd invite them for me. You bet. It's been a long time since anybody's had a real party in Red Mound. <laughs> They'll all be there. Fine. Scare up something to eat before we die of starvation. Yeah, a pound of leather sure gives me an appetite. That chuck ought to be about done, Bill. Come on, dish it up, will you? I don't know nothing about cooking. Jasper, and fetch him back here if we're going to keep on eating. Watch what you're doing. Reach! Rango. Stay put. You. Keep your hands on that counter. Palms down. What do you want? What's the idea? You were out on the lock and ranch today. Why? You can't prove I was out there. Oh, can I? This belongs to you, doesn't it? What if it does? That piece of your broken spur was found where you fired those three signal shots. And I have the empty cartridges to prove it. Just as I thought, 38 on the 45 frame. Stop talking, Dugan. Just why are you so anxious to keep people off that ranch? Look, Durango, if you're interested in making a little side money... You Knowing what? Strain along with me and not asking so many questions. You couldn't buy me out with everything you've got, Dugan. But you're going to tell me right now what you're doing on that ranch or I'll let daylight through you. Go scare him out. You two boys go around and back. Go after him.
Jasper ain't always gonna be so lucky. Doing a little hunting, Tom Woody? Huh. Hello, Larkin. You kind of scared me for a minute. But I didn't see you out there trying to get the Durango kid. From what I've heard, he can pretty much take care of his own troubles. Besides, honest people don't go around gunning for him. Maybe so. But to me, anyone who wears a mask is an outlaw. And we got too many of that breed in this town right now. You can say that again. <laughs> My supplies ready? <laughs> ah, here they are. Let's see, 749, $1.86, $9.35. 10, 45. 50 and 50 is 10. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to bid my party tomorrow. Uh -huh. It'll be a pleasure. Adios. <laughs> Adios. I'm all tuckered out. Can't you play something I can't dance to? All right, Smiley. We'll play something nobody can dance to. When I serenade Andy on my hoot toot dandy, her face lights up like a Christmas tree. I wear myself out playing, cause the gal keeps on saying, play that hoot and nanny for me. I never get a chance to talk about romance, cause ever that burn time I begin. Well, you can bet your dollar that Annie will holler, play that hootin' Nanny again. I'm starved for a word of love from Annie, but she keeps me on a hoot Nanny diet. By the time she lets me quit playing, why it's time to say good night. I don't mind playing for Randy on that darn hoot nanny, but that gal, she sure makes me sore. When I say, come here and love me, she says, heaven's above me, play that hoot nanny some more. Terry around. She's always willing to lend a hand. You mean Tug's lucky. <laughs> uh, you can start serving now, Smiley. Oh, that's all I ever do. Let them serve themselves. Come and get it. Come on. Now, just sure. a minute. There's something I'd like to say. It isn't often that we've had a chance to welcome a good man to Red Mound. They just don't seem to come our way anymore. I know how you folks all feel about the lawless conditions which exist in our fair community. And it is my earnest hope that our new friend and neighbor will continue to devote his every effort to rounding up those scallywags and putting them where they belong. Steve Larkin, welcome to Red Mound. Uh, thanks, Mr. Camote. 
And thanks to all of you. I came to Redmond for peace and quiet. But so far, I haven't had much. But I don't think it'll be long now, because I think we've got a lead on who the members of that gang are and what they're up to. Well, that's great, Steve. What is the layout? I can't tell you that, Mr. Camotti. Even the one out here have ears. <laughs> Go ahead, folks. Help yourself. Excuse me. Well, don't be bashful. What's this I hear about that new grandson of yours? Teething, isn't he? Well, you see me? Well, he's I'm so sorry. Your boy. Excuse me. I've got a hunch, boys, and I think it's a good one. Those outlaws have been using this ranch to hide the stolen cattle. That's why they've tried so hard to keep this place unoccupied. With anybody riding the range, they wouldn't dare move a herd for fear their hiding place would be discovered. But with everybody attending this party, they're bound to take advantage of it and make a drive. And we're going to fool them. Catch them red-handed. Right up and let's go. Carmody. I never have believed he was in with that gang. Well, how do you like that? And after all that big talk about cleaning up Red Man. Well, he was in a position to find out everything. He kept the gang informed. Now he'll lead us right to him. Let's go. Larkin played right into our hands and didn't know him. We'll take care of him before we grab off another herd, and nobody will be the wiser. That bunch ought to bring a fancy price across the border. There he goes, just like we figured. Come on. It's car Moody. Hello, Grant. Anything wrong? Larkin's wise to the whole setup. He's on his way here right now. Then we better drive that herd back and hide it again. Then it would be easy for him to find the hiding place. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Run him on through. Fargo, you and the boys get on the head of that herd and don't let him but ride with your guns ready. Shoot Larkin on sight. You get that tin horn deputy at the same time. Good haul. We'll stake out behind those trees over there. Take her by surprise. Regulations, I'm deputizing all of you, but don't waste any lead. I hope them rustlers don't waste any lead on me. Let them have it as soon as they come up. You boys take them from the front. I'll try and move in from the side. Ready? Go! I don't see Larkin with him. 
get Tug Carter anyhow. Stand trial. I see you, Angle. Let's let's talk this over. I could have put you where you really belong. Start moving. Tug. You ain't a deputy no longer. You're Red Mound's first real city marshal. Thanks, Smiley. Congratulations, Tug, and keep up the good work. Thanks, Steve. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Tug. Well, rub out the deadline, boys. Hey! Oh, we're rubbing out the deadline down to the raw. Stopping all the shooting and abiding by the law. Now we can smile and sing and live without fear. Everybody's happy, so hooray for good cheer. Shouting and a whooping and a clapping our hands. Stomping our feet and sing. Grateful and 